and it's on. Yay! All right, let's do this. Congratulations. Thank you, Steve. Thank you so much. Yes, save my life. Oh my God. You gotta take the sweatshirt off so Nancy can, or Dr. Reyes can see your neck. Okay. Oh, isn't that cool? Awesome. Thank you. Hey everyone. That was that was kind of crazy. Um, and that's that's what this this video is really going to be about complications that that arise for uh, people that have head and neck cancer and uh, some of the complications that I went through and these are things that are you know really I mean extremely important for for anyone going through this type of treatment any any um, chemo or radiation um, and then what could possibly happen you know uh, the first thing is you know the first the first two weeks the the treatment was, you know, I didn't really understand what was going on, and then I kind of figured out, you know, how they how they were doing the treatment and what they what they wanted me to, to do actually. And, uh, you know, I was doing my, you know, my normal routine with my uh, juicing and and vegetables and stuff like that, but then I noticed that you know I started to lose taste, and I started to talk to the doctor about it, and they said, "Well, what are you doing? What are you eating?" And I explained to them what I was eating, and they told me that they don't want me to do juicing, and uh, eating high anti um, um, antioxidant foods. And the reason why is the treatment or therapy is a oxidative therapy, which means that they want your body to be somewhere, you know, below seven. Uh, on the pH scale and the reason for that is is because it opens the cancer cells up and the cancer cells can consume more and that's what they want they want the cancer cells to be alive and consume and when your pH is higher than that what happens is the cancer cells tend to close off and the reason why is because they know that they're that there's a, a potential that something's out there trying to kill them and so they defend themselves so you know, it makes perfect sense. I, of course, I'm, I'm making that, you know, easy to understand, but there's a lot more technical terminology that goes along with that, too. Um, so, you know, those are things that you need to keep in mind. You need to talk to your doctor about what you're eating, the kind of medication you're taking, and all that kind of, all that, all that type of, of uh, information. And the reason why is it's important, because whatever they prescribe to you, they want to make sure that it doesn't, you know, uh, that it doesn't counter with something that you're taking and actually make it ineffective and you know I've, I've heard so many stories that that people are taking things that they don't tell their doctor about and what happens is it ends up canceling out their treatment well you don't want to go 38 rounds of, of radiation and have to end up doing it again because of something you did believe me it's torture the radiation treatment is torture it's not you know yeah you go in and you lay on the machine and it only takes you know 10 minutes 10 or 15 minutes but that the, what you get after is where the torture comes in because you get swelling, you get, um, you know, uh, your skin starts to fall off, that you, your, your throat is completely raw like hamburger. Um, so there's a lot of things that go on. So it's very, very important that you let your doctor know exactly what you're using and exactly what you're taking because you want this thing to work the first time. You don't want to, you don't want to have to go through this again. Um, so let's talk about some complications. The first thing is, I'm going to list them off and then I'm going to elaborate on them a little bit. The first thing is air passage, uh, throat swelling, sore throat, uh, major pain, swallowing, um, eating, just in general, and uh, your taste buds, uh, because those are going to go away and you're not going to be able to taste food, so it's going to be incredibly um, hard on you to eat because everything tastes really terrible. Um, feeding tube, we need to talk about that because they offer that. Some of them, some doctors will not want you to do it, but um, I have some opinions on that. Um, trache trache tracheostomy for air passage, uh, constipation, and medication. Now, it's, it's really important that um, we talk about each one of these things because these are where complications came in for me. So let's talk about air passage. The first two weeks, my air passage started to close off. And <clears throat> the reason why is because of the swelling, the intense radiation treatment on, on this area 
the swelling got so big that the it closed my air passage almost within two weeks. Um, it went from five to six uh, centimeters, which is uh, the normal air passage, to half a centimeter. And that was like smaller than a pea. So if anything were to, like the night before I went in and they found out, because they do a CAT scan every time before your radiation treatment to find out if your air passage is open because they don't want to treat you and find out that, you know what, they're going to close it up and you're going to end up, you know, passing out because of oxygen. You could die from it. But um, mine was smaller than a pee hole, so a pee couldn't even fit through it. So if I, I could have basically choked on my own saliva. So within the first two weeks, actually within the first uh, nine treatments, I had to end up going into emergency, and those are the videos that you saw, or some of the images that you saw is when I went in for that. I had to get an emergency tracheostomy, and also um, at that time I opted for the feeding tube, and I'll tell you about that in, in a moment. But the tracheostomy was the big thing because I couldn't breathe, and so they had to get me in, and they, they you know, cut me open and, and, and stuck the tube in and, and did that. Um, it was really kind of hard because when I was, they put you on a sedative and when I was on the sedative, when I was trying to come to, they had me on the, the, uh, the machine that uh, helps you breathe. And I was actually fighting the machine trying to breathe. And that to me was like near death experience. And I didn't know how to, con I didn't know how to, I didn't know how, what to do. And, um, you know, luckily my family was there and everybody was there trying to help me and I couldn't talk because they had this thing in my throat and uh, so I couldn't say anything so I'm waving my hands and I'm telling them, you know, I, I can't breathe, I can't breathe and uh, that was that was a crazy time but after that it was very very important to have that in because during treatment there's no possible way I could have went through 38 rounds of radiation without that tracheostomy in my throat to allow me to breathe so it's important that you you uh, check into that. You talk to your doctor about that. You talk to your radiologist about it to make sure that that's exactly what you need. Um, or if something were to come up, that they would let you know that you need to get that done immediately. Um, the throat swelling. Throat swelling is so important because they actually put you on a medication and some sometimes it's pred prednisone and uh, it's a terrible drug, but what it does is, is, is it does help the swelling. It keeps the swelling down so you're not completely swollen up, so you cannot do anything. Um, and that is like, it's more of a control drug. The other part of it is, is that that's a medication that at some point you have to get off of, and you can't just stop taking it. It's one of those things you have to wean off of. But uh, the swelling, the throat swelling is extremely important, and that falls into the sore throat part of it because eventually the first two weeks your, your throat doesn't really get sore. It's within the fourth week is when my throat turned to hamburger and basically it was so difficult to swallow that I had to have some kind of, you know, I had to have some kind of pain medication because there was just no possible way I could swallow anything. And uh, that is another thing that we need to talk about. And I'm talking about medication last because it's, it's, it's one of those things that's, it's, it's by the person. Each person is different. Each person handles pain differently. Uh, for me, the sore throat was extremely bad, so they had to put me on two different types of pain medication to help me uh, with that. Uh, the next thing is major pain. Um, the pain was not only in my neck and around this area here, but my throat area because that was hamburger, but it was all around every part of my neck, so it was very difficult to move my neck and to swallow um, and to basically just be, you know, in any kind of a position to be normal. So, you know, get ready for that because you're going to be in bed a lot, probably relaxing your head because it's going to be kind of difficult holding your head up and using those muscles because they're going to hurt so much. Um, unless, of course, you're, you know, you're, you're on a heavy dose of pain medication, uh, which some people get on. They get on the, uh, the, uh, the patch, the pain patch, and also they're, they're taking a um, time release pain medication as well as what they call a breakthrough pain medication. So there's there's several different types of medications that they will prescribe and get you on, which will help, uh, but you have to look down the road, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, swallowing. Swallowing and eating. 
those are the major, major concerns. Those are one of the things you're going to want to talk to your uh, oncologist and also your, your radiation specialist about. And, I, and I, I would advise before you start treatment. And the reason why is because there's two different types of feeding tubes. One that goes through your nose and, of course, the one that I have that's in the stomach. And, uh, you know, if you're going to plan on keeping yourself healthy, you're not going to want to... You're not going to want the one that goes through your nose. You're going to want the J tube that goes in your stomach. Um, and the reason for that is, is because you can bolus feed and you can feed as much as you want. You can do continuous feeding. You can do a number of different types of feeding and that will keep you at a normal weight um, because you're not going to want to swallow anything. The swallowing and eating is just completely, you know, anything through your mouth besides water is going to be just, you know, it's going to be very hard, very difficult. So that's something that you're really going to need to pay attention to. And you will definitely want to talk to them about it. Some will not, some will not, some of the oncologists and radiation specialists will not uh, advise you to get the, get these. And the reason why is because they want to try to get you through it without that. But my experience has been, and with the people that I've talked to, um, is that you really are going to want to have that in because getting it in after you're starting your treatment is going to be very difficult. So you're going to want to try to get those things done before your treatment begins. And believe me, you are going to say, oh my God, I'm so happy I did that. So that's something that you're going to have to think about. And I would advise you to talk to them about that first. Um, juicing and, you know, the type of food that you're going to be eating. Now, depending on the hospital that you go to, they're going to actually have a home health specialist come out and set you up with basically everything you need. Um, with food, with machines, whether you're doing the uh, vac the uh, the air machine, the um, they're going to have another suction machine that actually sucks out any kind of saliva or uh, you know buildup that goes in your throat if you get a tracheostomy. Um, the other thing is is that uh, they're going to set you up with food, so you're going to have these insure you know things that you're going to have to. Uh, that you're going to have to use to put into your to bolus feed yourself and uh, through your tube and also uh, they're going to set you up with a nutritionist that's going to actually talk to you about you know eating uh, how much calories you need every day um, how much you're going to need to feed yourself every day to keep yourself you know stable and uh, hydration keeping yourself hydrated constantly you know those are those are extremely important so you're going to want to pay attention to that um, the feeding tube, believe me, that's going to be something that you need. And the reason why is because that's where you're going to put the majority of your food. Uh, you will probably be drinking water just to keep yourself uh, lubricated. But you're not going to drink enough water because it's going to hurt so bad to swallow. So feeding yourself water in your, in your tube is going to be another thing that you're going to want to do uh, on a continual basis to get that done. Um, the tracheostomy, if you get one, you need to make sure that you keep it clean and keep it so it's it doesn't get infected in those areas. You know, follow what the doctor's you know uh, description is and what they they actually recommend for you because you need to keep that clean. I've seen other people that have have them in and they're they're just they're filthy and they wait for home health to come clean it. So you want to kind of try to take control of that and keep that clean because you want to be able to breathe constantly and not have any problems, especially when you sleep because when you sleep is when you get a lot of phlegm buildup. And that can actually plug your tube, and if it does, then you're going to end up having, you know, some issues. So you're definitely going to want to have, have that uh, set up. The other thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about constipation, because you, if you're taking the medications that they're going to prescribe, along with the shock your body's going to be in from the chemo and the uh, radiation treatment, now, I'm not talking about surgery, because my body healed pretty good from the surgery that I had. It wasn't, you know, extensive. But if you have some major surgery where they've cut some things out, this can also play a really big role in your constipation because your body's in shock. And then also you're taking, um, you're taking extreme pain medication, which if it's an opiate, if it's an opiate based pain medication, it definitely completely slows your bowel system down and your digestive system just turns to crap. So you basically don't digest food like you normally do. It moves through your system so slowly that it just it 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 really turns really hard, very solid. So you're constantly going to have to be on uh, 
some type of suppositories. You're going to also have to take, you know, you might have to even take things medically uh, through your tube or if you can swallow that will help with that because the constipation is a real issue. And for some people, it's so bad that they have to go to the hospital to actually get evacuated. So this is something that's very important. And you also want to talk to your oncologist and your radiation specialist about that as well because they can get that set up for you ahead of time. That way, when you start to feel that way and you start to have problems where you're not going within a week, um, you know, and sometimes a week and a half, uh, which is very, very dangerous, you definitely want to be able to evacuate properly. And there's several reasons for that. One of the biggest reasons is the toxicity of the chemicals that are being used, the chemotherapy as well as the radiation because it's killing cells. Um, those things need to be cleared out and evacuated for your body on a constant basis and, and, and most of it can come out through your urine but a lot of it comes out through your bowel movement so it's important that you're evacuated you know on a regular basis because if not it builds up in your system and then now you have all this toxicity inside of you that's not evacuating and you can't do a detox because then everything that they've done to that point you know would get wasted away and you don't want to do that so it's important to talk to your, your doctor about that. Constipation is a, is a huge issue. And then that leads me into your medication. Your medication is a big issue. And the reason why it is, is because of the conflicts of different medications. So those really play a big role in how you recover. And the biggest thing is, is that if you're taking medications before you actually go in for treatment, and then they actually prescribe things to you, but you don't tell them what you're taking, that could be a major issue because some medications conflict with other medications and will actually make you sick. Uh, they can kill you. Um, they can make you so you're completely dizzy and you're off kilter. Um, they can make, they can actually make you feel a certain way that actually when you go to the doctor and talk to them about it, if you don't explain that to them that you've taken another medication, they're going to actually diagnose you with something else. And that is a major issue and it happens all the time. So you want to be upfront, complete. I don't care if you're taking supplements, whatever you're taking, an aspirin. You want to make sure that the doctor knows what you're taking, how frequently you're taking it, and um, why you're taking it. So you need to make sure that you're upfront with your doctor about all of that before you even get, before the treatment starts. And then once they start to prescribe medications to you, you want to stay on top of that. You don't want to miss medication days where you're taking them if it's every other day or every day or once a week, whatever it is. You want to stay on top of your schedule because once you start to just take it anytime you want, you're going to end up creating problems for yourself that are unnecessary and your body is already going through a tremendous amount of trauma because of the treatment. So you don't want to put it through any more than you have to. So you want to try to stay with a schedule, whatever the schedule is that they put out, provided for you. You want to stay with that schedule and you want to make sure that everything that you're taking is, you know, on their list. And if you change anything, you want to let them know. They want to know why. They want to know, you know, just let them know if you decide to change anything. But you also want to make sure that they agree with you changing the medication too. Um, in my next video, I'm going to, this video is going on pretty long. It's about 18 minutes. But in my next video, I want to talk a little bit more about medication because I want to talk about after you have completed your treatment, how you need to approach getting off your medication. Because that's a major issue for a lot of people, and a lot of people talk about it. And there's a lot of things on the internet about it, but there's, there's the information on there will, you know, there's a lot of information that's bad information. And it's really hard to find, you know, ways to get off of medication properly. Uh, the biggest thing for me was to talk to my doctor, but I'll get into that later because that is a major, major issue. So um, I hope this video has helped in some possible way because the complications of treatment are, are really, they're real and they happen. And so these are things that you need to know about. Now, if anybody has any questions about any of these, I've gone through this myself, and I've gone through the different types of uh, um, swallowing issues, the foods, you know, the, the nutrition part of it. So if you need to know anything about that, you know, please just go ahead right below, just leave a message, and I'll, I'll get back to you.
um, because there's some certain there you're going to start to lose your taste, and there's only some foods that you'll be able to eat once you're able to swallow. And I'll be I'll, I'll elaborate more on that in the next video. But for now, I appreciate you guys watching, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks.